already have uh, Dr. Lau and Dr. Nizam who will give their insight about uh, practitioner in Satera ya Mem Satera Biotechnology and maybe because uh, we already and Mem you already talk a lot of things about Satera so I think firstly I would like to introduce our speaker first yeah, before we enter to the main the main uh, the main material for today uh, meeting uh, before that maybe uh, for the host is it possible to turn on the share screen for all participants okay thank you very much Okay, so today we will have two two speakers in here. Yeah, firstly, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Lau. So Dr. Lau in here, uh, he is from Malaysia, and he was graduated in PhD from UTM University Technology of Malaysia. Hello, Malaikum. In 2010, uh, um, uh, he also graduated MSG in management at yeah, uh, University of Malaysia and uh, bachelor study uh, was also from UTM. And from award, we can see that uh, he was studying about a lot of things yeah, and he he got award from many resources. Yeah, in here we can see a lot of awards that he got from the last five five years and until <laughs> ten years ago. Okay, teaching experience. So in here we can see uh, that he he is mastered in uh, teaching management skill. Yeah, to a lot of uh, project management. Uh, in here, environmental management, yeah, business mathematics, and etc. Okay, professional membership, uh, certified trainers of FMM, Federation of Malaysia Manufacturer, Malaysian Institute of Management, ASEAN Academy and Management. Okay, and many, uh, many things yeah, from uh, his curriculum vitae. And the second speakers in here, we have uh, Dr. Muhammad Khairil Nizam. Uh, he, was, uh, he is also from Malaysia. And he was graduated from International Business and Law yeah, uh, from UK, Nottingham Trent University in 2006. Then uh, Business Management, 2008. One, and two, and for the experiences, so he is consultant, yeah, in Pahang Corporate Management Service, uh, services from October two thousand and twenty three until now. Okay, so the responsibility is uh, for developing the business, yeah, in Satera, and. Uh, excluding that, maybe uh, he is also a director of AMZ Global Venture, yeah, of PhD and ASEAN Region Advisor. Yeah, so he has many many responsibility. Yeah, for now. Okay, without wasting any time, maybe we would, we will start for today's meeting. So, for Dr. Lau, maybe. Yeah. Good evening. Hello. Good afternoon. All right. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Lau, um, please. Yeah. Maybe I'll can, start the thing. Yeah, you can yeah. start your your presentation, yes. please. Can Can I share the Can I have the yes. share slide? Yes. Sure. Uh, sure. You can right. start sharing your screen. All right. Can you see? 
Yes, we can see your screen. All right. Okay. So I put that an afternoon with University Negeri Jakarta. We talk about carbon trading. Good afternoon. Selamat selamat siang. Apa kabar semua di Jakarta? Moho, moga semua sehat-sehat belaka. I hope my my bahasa is correct. Uh, okay. Uh, you can give me a feedback if it is not not uh what they say not accurate. So uh, thank you very much for inviting me and Mr. Nizam to talk about carbon trading. So uh, the um, talk here will be divided into four parts. The first one is to, to talk about the introduction. Why are we talking about carbon trading? Mengapa kita membincangkan pasal apa ni carbon trading? So uh, the first part, I'm going to give you some introduction. Uh, one on the current world scenario. And then also uh, when we talk about this carbon trading, it has to do with the climate change. So climate change is caused by greenhouse gases. Okay, uh, gas rumah hijau. I don't know whether the is the terms that you use in the in the in in Indonesia is the same one or not. So anyway, this is the type of greenhouses. Just to get the narrative started, so that we are aware what we are talking about. And of course, the main focus is on carbon dioxide. That's why you talk about carbon trading. So we're gonna talk about what is the impact of carbon dioxide how does carbon dioxide uh, changes over the year and uh, what has it done to our uh, climate and the world temperature and the climate all, all, uh, overall and how are we going to address this so to address this of course we talk about something on sustainable development because i think not only we are concerned about carbon we are also concerned about other matters so the whole idea is to give some overview of the whole thing. So we're going to talk something on sustainable development. What is sustainable development? Uh, kita panggil, but in Malaysia, we call it uh, pembangunan mampan. Uh, supposed to be that. So, and then, of course, finally, we come to the topic of carbon trading, which uh, my good friend, uh, Mr. Nizam, will talk about it. And uh, finally, uh, Q and A sessions. All right. So this is the approach of today's uh, presentation: uh, a short, friendly, uh, and informal kind of presentation. Yeah. So if anything along the way, please let me know. If you need any question, any clarification, please stop me. It's okay. We make it very, like I say, very relaxed. Anybody can ask any questions. All right. And then we we'll see how we can actually help uh, to answer. Hopefully, we can answer it. All right. Okay. So far, so good. Good, doctor. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. The first part that we're going to talk about is the current world scenario. What is the current world scenario? If you look at the current world scenario now, the biggest issue that is affecting human, because we are humans, we are talking about humanity. Uh, when we talk about humanity, we are talking about survival of human mainly, and also, also of course, other species uh, around the world that share the, 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 the world with us. So one of the current, if you look at the current scenario, the situation now is that climate change is the biggest, single biggest effect on us. I think we just suffer the world F, uh, pandemic lately. I mean, the COVID-19, which is actually one of the, uh, what do you say, uh, impact of uh, these uh, changes that is happening in our lifestyle. So it, it affect not only one country, it affect the whole world, it affect everybody. Some lost their family members, some lost their business, some lost their livelihood and so on. And we're just recovering from that. So we hope there's no more another of this disaster coming in. So if you look at the current world scenario, this is what is happening, climate change. And climate change is actually harming, cause a lot of things. One, of course, in terms of health, uh, COVID is just one of it, pollution, disease. And now we are getting more and more situation of this extreme weather event. Kalau banjir tu memang banjir yang teruk-teruk. Kalau kita ada kemara memang lama sangat. So this is other thing. Because why all this? This extreme weather, how does it affect us? Extreme weather not only cause losses, but it also cause in terms of what uh, food production. So when you do, when you have 
effect on food production definitely is going to have effect on us. So these are the things that uh, that uh, what do you say is happy is happening now. So food security now has become one of the big issues. And food security, one of the cause of food security is also because of the uh, current uh, what do you say climate changes that is happening around us. So what are the proof? Okay, we talked about this one. Apa bukti ni bahawa apa ni benda-benda yang berlaku di sini adalah yang sebenarnya yang telah berlaku di sini. So kita tengok ini apa ni? Uh, it's not just a mention of what we say, what we feel, but it's based on scientific, uh, what do you say, proof. And if you look at it, this is what we call as science-based science evidence of climate change that we are seeing now. You see the ocean, for example. If you talk about the ocean, the ocean's temperature has been going up, okay, since 1969. And because the ocean temperature has gone up, some of the species, plankton and so on, uh, what do you say, uh, is dying. So this created problems for the ocean to sustain fish. And this may have impact on us in future. And if you look at it, an increase of 0 0.33 degrees Celsius may not be a lot. But then if you look at it, 90% of the world, uh, what do you say, heat is stored in the ocean. So that means this is a lot. You know, even though that rise of temperature is a little bit, but the impact is huge. All right. And then the other scientific base that, the, that, that evidence that climate is changing is also because if you look at Greenland and Arctic ice, uh, if you look at in terms of the loss of ice per year, okay, Arctic and Greenland is losing in billions of tons. It's no longer of a little bit, but it's a lot. And this ice, when they melt, what happened? They cause the seawater to go up. And when sea water goes up, see, you look at it, global sea level has rose by 8 inches. That's a lot. And double in the last century, last 100 years, the increase has been two times. So when sea level goes up, we have less land. And uh, world population is increasing. So it, we cannot live in the sea. We are not fish. Right? So we live on land. So when, when sea uh, water goes up, we have less land, we have more people, and uh, you know, this creates a lot of issues. Not only in terms of insufficient land, it can also create in terms of mental issues. You know, if you are too crowded, then there will be a lot of uh, stress, and this actually causes mental issues. So not only so much on uh, what they say, having, a, having sufficient space to live, but it also causes about uh, other matters. So this is the science base. Another thing that can be seen is in terms of climate change. If you look at it, these are the events that is happening. All right, natural disaster, death, global economic losses, climate-related disasters. If you look at it, the percentage of increase from two from the for the last ten years, for the last twenty years, compared to the earlier since nineteen eighties. The increase is, if you look at it, is 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 uh, frightening. Natural disasters increased by 75%. Global economic losses, climate-related disasters increased by 80 over percent. This is this is I mean this is very frightening as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned. And then if you look at major flood, now we have two times more compared to the last uh, 20 years. Severe storm has gone up by another 40%. All these are science-based information, science-based uh, facts that our climate, our world is having serious uh, climate issues. Now. Right? So another thing that we want to look at is in terms of the temperature, the world temperature. I'll show, I'll play a video link for you all. Hopefully you can see. Right? Can you see? Hello, hello. Friends in Indonesia, can you see? Yes, you can see your screen. All right. Yeah. So if you look at it for the last last yeah yeah. If you look at it for the last earlier, which is from eighteen eighteen thousand. Sorry. All right. 
until right up to 1970, 1955, the, 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 what do you say, the temperature does not change much, right? It is still blue in, it's still blue. That means the temperature is still okay, right? But from 1980 onwards, you see the colors have changed to yellow and then eventually becomes red. So it means that the temperature has actually gone up. If you look at by, by, the, the, by the, sorry. Uh, sorry, yeah. let me just, oh, this is too fast. If you look at the chart here, the blue means that uh, the temperature is still below, below zero. Uh, yellow means it's slightly above zero. But when it comes to red, that means to say the temperature has gone up by another two degrees. So, so this is, this is um, you know, these are the situations that we are looking at. So if you look at it, the, what is worrying is that the northern hem hemisphere temperature seems to have gone up over by 22 degrees. Same thing, yeah, the Arctic and the Antarctic it has gone up. Overall, the world has been, become warmer compared to the others, compared to their previous uh, centuries. So this is, this, is the, this is the situation that we are looking at. And uh, actually, there is also a, a study by this uh, Stefan, uh, published in uh, Science. Um, they discover that what, they are, what these people, what this, this group of scientists do is they try to look into uh, human activities and how human activities have kind of impact oh, on our Papa world. Jackie. Yeah, yeah, Bole? Hello? So these are the things that if you look at it, these are the changes that is happening. And uh, what we are seeing is that uh, there are certain, certain activities of human being has, has is, I mean, is, is under the zone of uncertainty, a high risk. Whether we can still turn back or not, it is a big, big question mark. If you look at it, the red color, we have nitrogen, we have phosphorus. These are the use of chemical fertilizer and this has gone into our sea, you know, and into our river, into our sea. If you look at it, and also from uh, industrial waste that gone into the sea and gone into the river. So this is beyond zone of uncertainty. There's a very high risk. Whether we can turn it back or not is something that we do not know. All right. And then, of course, uh, at one time we were talking about uh, ozone, right? There's a big hole of ozone. That was, I think, in, in the early 90s. We talked about a big hole. Uh, and uh, fortunately, we are able to reverse it. So, so now the hole is no longer as big. It's no longer of major concern. But at one time, it was a big concern. So we managed to reverse that, meaning that human being can actually improve our world. So what are we looking at now? Currently, we are looking at climate change. Yeah, climate change. So climate change, it is still in the zone of uncertainty. There's an increased risk. We are hoping that we can actually reverse this or you know, reverse it or maybe improve it in such a way that it is less threatening to human beings. So this is what we actually, today we are talking about a climate change here. And uh, so now we, what is the, the, the greatest challenge that we are having now is to hopefully that we do not go over the tipping point. If we go beyond tipping point, meaning the world is not able to heal itself, then we are in big trouble. Uh, and uh, maybe, you know, sometimes you look at, you see movie, yeah, that the world is no longer inhabitable. They got to take space, uh, you know, big space aircraft to go to live to find another world. I hope we don't come to this situation. Okay. So, okay, let's talk about climate change and climate change is caused by the increase of uh, temperature. And there are actually four types of major greenhouses, greenhouse gases that is uh, that is produced by human activities that has caused this uh, the rise in temperature or this greenhouse effect. Of course, the first one is carbon dioxide, which we are very familiar with, and it normally is caused by the burning of fossil fuel. Fossil fuels, it terbakar bahan api. Pembakaran bahan api menghasilkan tenaga untuk kita. So if you are talking about using motorcycles, you are talking about using cars, you are talking about producing, uh, what do you say, uh, energy for, for the electricity, producing energy for 
you know, for factories and so on and so forth, we are still mainly using uh, fossil fuel. Maksudnya kita pakai petrol lah. Jadi pembakaran ini menghasilkan banyak gas carbon dioxide. So this is one thing. The other one that is cause, uh, the other cause of uh, greenhouse gases are methane. Methane normally is produced along the burning of fossil fuels, but not so much. Uh, but mainly from natural gas and also from livestock. Okay, uh, the agriculture practices that normally we, we use this. All right, and also uh, sometimes in the in the uh, what do you say? Uh, land use, you know, uh, we, we uh, what do you say, we fill the land with, with, uh, with, with rubbish, we cover up, and this sometimes produces methane gas, right? Uh, so this, these are the, these are the second, second one that causes, uh, uh, what do you say, greenhouse effect. So, kita cuba kurangkan bahan buangan, organic, uh, okay, so that we can reduce methane. The third one, of course, is from uh, hydrofluorocarbons gas. This is halogen gas, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and so on. And this normally comes from the industrial activities. Kita menghasilkan plastik, kita menghasilkan uh, aircon, we use aircons, we use uh, uh, styrofoam, and so on. This could release fluorinated gas into the our atmosphere. And of course, the last one is nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide mainly comes from agriculture activities. Uh, we use, uh, what do you say, um, what do you see, these uh, fertilizers, uh, synthetic fertilizer, and so on. So this produces nitrous oxide. So these are the four major greenhouse gases. And But our main concern is carbon dioxide. Why carbon dioxide? You look at the graph, you can see. You look at the 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 what do you say the pie the bar I mean the 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 pie chart you can see seventy six percent of the greenhouse gases come from carbon dioxide. Ini paling banyak, so it becomes our major concern, right? Methane is sixteen percent, nitrous oxide six percent, uh, the halogen gas about two two percent. Of course, all these causes greenhouse effect but to tackle we normally go for the major one first like what uh, mr pareto used to say uh 2080 if you can you focus on the 20 percent major causes you can solve about 80 percent of the problems that is facing the earth so in this case you look at it the major causes of this greenhouse effects come from two methane and carbon dioxide with carbon dioxide being the major one at 76 percent all right, and even though methane tends to uh, have a bigger effect, but methane stays in our atmosphere for a shorter period of time. If you look at it, why we focus on carbon dioxide? Two main reasons. One, major greenhouse effect is by carbon dioxide. Second, carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere much longer than the other gases. So in this case, carbon dioxide can stay up to 10,000 years. You know. So we need to tackle carbon dioxide. So what are the proof? You know, uh, what are the things that we why we focus on carbon dioxide? And like I say, it's a greenhouse effect. And if you track the carbon dioxide that we release into the air with the world temperature, you see there's a similarity. More and more carbon dioxide you release into the air, higher and higher the uh, world temperature. You look at the red one, which is the mean uh, temperature increase. This is the number amount of carbon dioxide that we release into the air. So there is a very close correlation between them. And we can clearly say that this is one of the causal effects of uh, global, te global uh, temperature in rises increase. Again, uh, since 1990, 19,000 until now, the curve is exponential curve. We are it's very worrying when you look at it as exponential curve. We may that's why we say we hope that we don't come to the tipping point. Harap kita tak sampai kepada keadaan di mana kita tak boleh patah balik. Kita harapkan bahawa benda ini kita boleh mengatasi supaya tidak berlaku situasi di mana kita tidak dapat lagi memperbaiki keadaan dunia kita sekarang. Ya. Yeah? 
kalau kita buat perbandingan di antara total carbon dioxide per capita maksudnya berdasarkan kepada uh, apa ni jumlah manusia yang menghasilkan carbon dioxide the highest one seems to be dekat which country okay if you look at it it is in ah uh, tend tends to be in the middle east qatar bahrain kuwait mengapa if you notice these are the countries that produce a lot of fossil fuels so so release of carbon dioxide uh, on that brunei in southeast asia brunei is number 10 uh, singapore is number 27 malaysia is number 38 indonesia is at 122 all right congratulations indonesia all right and of course we have other countries as so well. this is per capita if you talk about per capita but if you look at region Okay, if you look at region, then it's different. The biggest polluter is still from the North America region, meaning that America, Canada, they are the, they are the one of the major uh, producer of uh, carbon dioxide, releasing of carbon dioxide into the air. The second one is EU and Central Asia. So those European countries. So if you look at it, those developed countries, seems to be producing more release of this carbon dioxide into the air compared to other countries right uh, of course asia is catching up if you look at it east asia this is red color we are catching up mainly contributed by china due to the increase of industrialization in china vietnam's all right these are the things and of course india is also coming up very fast right so this so, but nevertheless, the developed country seems to be the major uh, culprit, if I can use the word, to, to release carbon dioxide into the air. <clears throat> okay, well, for any, the Chinese used to say, for any challenge, there is also an opportunity. So what are you talking about? We are talking about opportunity as in terms of how we can, we can, uh, tap on the current situations to improve the livelihood of people. So this, this, this challenge actually created opportunities for us to come up with new set of thinking, new set of technology, new sets of doing things, and new sets of business. All right, new sets of uh, wealth generation. So this is also an opportunity that comes along with this. All right. So what are the new things that we are looking at? The new thing that we are putting that, that what are the opportunities that comes in with this? The opportunity talks about sustainability. All right, sustainability. So sustainability we are talking about here is what? We talks about what is the meaning of sustainability? Sustainability basically means that it can go on forever. So meeting the needs of the present, that means fulfilling our needs without affecting the future generation needs. So, keperluan kita dipenuhi tanpa mempengaruhi, uh, mengkompromi uh, keperluan generasi akan datang. Dan itu istilah sustainability. Okay. So, how to look at it Kitaran. Tiga kitaran yang menjadikan kita panggil apa sebagai uh, sustainability, mem, mem, uh, sustain the earth, the three natural cycle that sustain the earth, nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide. All these three are major concerns. All right, but today we only going to talk about carbon dioxide. Water is also a major concern. There is also a concern where fresh water is getting less and less. All right. So there is actually a, a book. I cannot remember the author. They are talking about the future war. Could be people, human being fight because of water. And of course, nitrogen. So today's topic is on carbon dioxide. Let's focus on carbon dioxide. All right. This is the natural one. Ini secara semula jadi. Secara semula jadi, Photosynthesis itu ah. 
uh, oleh hidupan hidupan itu fotosintesis dan fotosintesis datangnya daripada tenaga datangnya daripada matahari jadi ia free percuma right uh, dan uh, of course uh, uh, apa ni uh, hasil daripada fotosintesis karbon yang ada daripada udara ditukarkan kepada uh, hidupan dan juga di, dibawa masuk ke ke tanah Alright, jadi ini ini secara semula jadi. Alright, dan uh, pengeluaran karbon dioksida dan pengeluaran karbon dioksida atau karbon dioksida diambil oleh tumbuh-tumbuhan. Ini secara semula jadi. So it's a closed system, nothing disappear, nothing. Uh, uh, what do you say? Everything is dispersed, no loss. The cycle is beautiful. Alright, sometimes you may have a volcanic eruption. It causes a lot of carbon dioxide in the air, but eventually the rain comes in. You will pull this thing. The natural occurrences. However, that we affect. We tend to draw a lot of those carbon that is stored in Earth. We bring it out into the air. For example, the carbon that is stored as Uh, fossil fuel, right? Fossil fuel daripada minyak kita bawa kita keluarkan daripada perut bumi kita bakar dan dia pergi kepada udara. So ini mempengaruhi kitaran semula jadi tadi dan kita tebang semakin banyak pokok kita tebang untuk tujuan pembangunan, membina rumah untuk manusia, membina kilang. Uh, untuk menghasilkan produk dan ini menjadikan jumlah tumbuhan yang ada di dunia ini semakin berkurangan. Begitu juga dengan aktiviti-aktiviti manusia yang lain dan ini secara tidak langsung mempengaruhi kitaran semula jadi tadi. Jadi uh, kitaran ini telah dipengaruhi. Persoalan sekarang ialah bagaimana kita hendak memastikan bahawa kitaran ini tidak tidak apa ni? tidak terjejas sehingga kan ia tidak lagi dapat berfungsi sendiri. We wanted to make sure that this cycle is not being affected in such a way that it, it cannot reverse back. We do not want to go the beyond the tipping point. Right? So that these are the, these are the, these are the things. Then there is also another thing that affect this uh, uh, what do you say uh, our way of maintaining sustainability is that human being inherently secara semula jadi we are greedy alright uh, orang kalau semua orang menghasilkannya kalau kita menghasilkan pun kesannya tidaklah begitu banyak jadi kita boleh terus hasilkan alright uh, dia negara itu negara maju mereka ada industri kita juga boleh bina industri dan industri ini menghasilkan karbon yang sedap pergi ke udara kesannya tidaklah begitu teruk So kita boleh bina makin lama makin banyak. So we call this tragedy of commons. Uh, it's basically because we are greedy. We want to have, I know we have extra one more, tak apalah. Uh, after all, everything is there already. So if you have extra one more, the effect will not be there. After all, extra one. But you have more and more people thinking of that. That means the extra one is going to be a lot. And we may go beyond that tipping point. Yeah? Somebody is saying something just now? Hello? Hello, hello. Yeah. Anybody want to give some 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 feedback? Uh, we call it the tragedy of the commons. All right. So overpopulation and greed. Greed is one of the cause. Just like they talk about going to the ocean to catch the fish. All right. We catch fish. Everybody start catching fish. If I catch a little bit more, it will not have effect. But if everybody has that kind of thinking, I catch a little bit more. I catch a little bit more. We end up we don't have fish anymore. Right. So the same thing with carbon dioxide. Everybody release carbon dioxide into the air. So if I release a little bit more, it's okay lah. So but if everybody thinks that way, then there there will be a point where we have too much of carbon dioxide in in the air. We may not be able to reverse it anymore.
The other thing is to control our grid. How do we do this? Of course, uh, we're going to talk about some of the ways to do it. All right. So how to how to go about it? This is where it talks about. We want to focus on sustainability. Uh, how? By getting a very clear objective and also to control the grid. If you can have these two, hopefully the cycle could be protected and we can control humans' grid in this sense. All right. So this is the this is where sustainability uh the the implementation comes in. We want to have a clear objective and to control humans' greed. All right. The clear objective is in what? The three P there. People, prosperity, planet. We want to make sure that our activities bring benefit to the people, improve our lifestyle, and also does not harm the planet. All right. So how do you go about it? Basically, there are four uh, operating manuals that uh, that is being agreed upon. One is by what? Reducing whatever things that we take from the earth. All right. So how to do it? One of the way is by using recycle. The other way is to improve in terms of efficiency. So this is this. Uh, and of course, to look for new, re new possible of new, uh, getting the, 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 what do you say, minerals, whatever from earth from elsewhere. So some of the example in action that we can see better technology in terms of mining and surveying so that we do not destroy much mining from the moon i think this is where the the what is it china and other thing other countries are, are putting a lot of effort in the space program to go to moon to go to mars to hopefully to mine from there and use the minerals in earth on earth so that uh, we don't have to keep extracting from our earth so we can control that and of course we talked about use of less fossil oil by using electric vehicle. These are the examples that we see already in action. All right. Objective number two is to reduce the current waste that we have put into the world. All right. How to do it? Then again, improve the efficiency. Again, we can use the word, we can talk about tight technical cycles. That means to say we try to use uh, recycle. So these are the things that we are looking at. Recycle of cooking oil for aviation or biodiesel. I think Indonesia is doing a good job of using cooking oil converted into biodiesel. Uh, same with China. Uh, China currently they are changing the cooking oil into aviation fuel. Apa ni? Minyak masak ditukarkan kepada minyak kapal terbang. Food waste. We try to reduce the we uh, food waste. But, uh, our food that is not finished, kita makan McDonald, paki itu tak habis, kita buang, makanan itu kita tukarkan kepada benda yang apa ni, ber, ber, berguna as in terms of using black soldier fly to convert food waste into fertilizer and so on. These are some of the examples that we are using. We are, I mean, that we are, we are uh, that human being, that we human are actually doing now. So we are talking about opportunities, ah, ini, ah. So the third one is, of course, trying to control the physical degradation, con maintain our nature. So some of the examples that we say is mangrove forest preservation. This is where Satira comes in. We try to preserve mangrove forest. Try to make sure that we the mangrove forest that we have stays as it is. Kalau kita nak tebang pun, there's a control way of cutting. We don't just keep cutting, all right? So in the case of Malaysia, the mangrove preservations, they use certain uh, regulations that comes in. You can only cut trees that is above 30 years old. Anything below 30 years old, you can't cut. And the trees that you cut, you must replant it. And you cannot cut based on the zoning. So by the time you finish the whole zone, the one that you have planted will be 30 years old already. So this is, this is one of the ways to go about it, all right? And also reserve for us. And objective number four is to make sure that people have uh, able to live a good, I mean, a, 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 a good standard of living. Uh, we want to ensure that everybody in this world will benefit from the progress of human being. So how do we look at it? Some of the examples, we are talking about building better irrigation system. All right. 
uh, so that we can have more places to plant, uh, what do you say, trees, more places to plant uh, food related, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, plants. And then of course, using technology to better market uh, information, that means you're talking about empowerment, so that uh, people has this uh, ability to improve themselves and of course better education we are looking at these other things that is happening online self learning so that we have and more people have uh what do you say education more people have information more people have knowledge all right to make this world a better place and of course to improve themselves the next thing is how can we control the grid so how to control the grid one of the way is to incentivize people or government whatever to make those changes right so what other way one other way is by converting the jet the com tragedy of commons into private so meaning that you can force people to not use it or you can uh what do you say you can actually uh encourage them to to uh, display behavior that is good for the carbon cycle. All right. So what you do is sometimes by making the 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 what do you say the tragic the, the common things that we have by making it private. Private means you gotta pay for it. Uh, you can be uh you can be stopped from using if you don't pay. So at one time people are saying, can cow go extinct or not? Uh, tiger may extinct. Because tiger, there's no control. It's a, it's a, it's a common property. But cow becomes a private property. Cow will, cow will never go extinct because people will take care of it. So same thing when we talk about carbon dioxide that is released into the air. Now we are talking about making it private. When you say making it private, means it's been controlled by government uh, on the amount of carbon that can be released. That is how the concept of carbon trading comes into play. Right, so this is basically uh, the, the introduction of carbon trading. Right, so the second portion it talks about now how to implement carbon trading. This I will pass it to Mr. Nizam. Mr. Nizam, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you very much, Dr. Lu. Uh, can everybody hear me? Will you hear? Okay, boleh dengar. Terima kasih. Um, yang pertama sekali terima kasih kepada Universiti Negeri Jakarta kerana uh, for the invitation. Uh, terima kasih Dr Dalia, uh, Dean of Faculties, Vice Dean, um, dan Dr Lo. Thank you very much for the explanation. Uh, jadi sekarang kita masuk bab uh, bahagian carbon trading. Uh, saya rasa yang pertama sekali uh, mungkin saya perkenalkan sejarahnya dulu. Uh, the concept of uh, carbon trading telah mula diperkenalkan uh, pada tahun uh, 1997 di mana Uh, Kyoto Protocol semasa United Nations uh, bersidang di Jepun uh, they, they come up with Kyoto Protocol to introduce the concept of carbon trading as a policy tool kayaknya uh, di, di di introducekan untuk address uh, the issue of climate change and all the uh, climate problems uh, one of the uh, kyoto protocol uh, concern is to establish legally binding emissions reduction targets untuk develop and developing countries jadi di bawah framework ini uh, ada beberapa uh, mechanisms yang telah diperkenalkan uh, maksudnya mekanisme yang mekanisme yang pertama yang 
paling awal sekali diperkenalkan adalah Democracy Development Mechanism. Uh, it allows developed countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia to offset their emissions by investing dengan melabur di emission reduction projects. Um, this emission reduction punya credits known as uh, certified emission reductions could then be used, boleh digunakan untuk diinvest uh, by countries, by developed countries untuk meet their, their own uh, emission reduction targets. Contohnya, uh, seperti negara China, negara Amerika, di, di mana uh, mereka mem- mengeluarkan banyak karbon dan memang tidak ada mencukupi dari segi uh, forest mereka ataupun mangrove. Jadi mereka boleh uh, so-called membeli uh, di certified uh, what we call this emissions reduction credit dari negara-negara membangun seperti Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia dan sebagainya. Jadi uh, semasa konsep itu diperkenalkan uh, di bawah United Nations Framework of Convention and Climate Change UNFCCC uh, di pada tahun 1997 uh, benda ini agaknya baru terlampau baru tetapi setelah uh, seperti yang Dr. Lo mention uh, di uh, apa ni uh, di di dibincangkan subsequently di dalam United Nations pada tahun 2002 World Summit di Johannesburg telah menggabungkan United Nations bersama pihak-pihak kerajaan, pihak bisnes dan juga pihak-pihak NGO untuk mengambil tindakan yang lebih serius jadi United Kingdom adalah negara yang telah memperkenalkan carbon reduction subsidy yang dahulu. Dan kita lompat 10 tahun di hadapan di mana convention di Rio, di Brazil, part of BRICS telah mengafirmkan dia punya komitmen kerana selain daripada negara Malaysia dan Indonesia, negara Brazil mempunyai salah satu forest, Amazon forest yang terbesar. Jadi agak penting untuk mereka juga mengintroduskan ini. Dan subsequently di United Nations meeting di Paris Climate Accord di Paris COP 21 telah berkumpulnya negara-negara semua dan dia panggil Paris Climate Accord yang mana negara Malaysia, Indonesia adalah parti itu disegitari termasuklah negara Amerika sehinggalah Donald Trump masuk dan keluar balik tapi sekarang ni saya difahamkan mereka masuk balik semula part of that climate accord jadi to move forward uh, buat masa pada masa sekarang <coughs> as of uh, Januari 2023 ada 10 negara ya uh, actually se- uh, 10 negara yang uh, betul-betul aktif di dalam uh, carbon trading ini uh, China uh, US Canada New Zealand Jepun South Korea dan European Union adalah uh, negara-negara yang betul-betul aktif di dalam carbon trading um, seperti uh, apa ni European Union telah menubuhkan uh, satu carbon emissions trading system EU emissions trading system yang mana dia adalah salah satu terbesar uh, alongside uh, pihak China di bawah National Development dan Reform Commission uh, di China, NDRC, National Development and Reform Commission, telah memainkan peranan yang penting untuk membangunkan dan juga 
um, overseeing uh, the national carbon market. Jadi uh, dia yang uh, bertanggungjawab untuk uh, setting up emissions cap, dia design uh, market mechanism dan juga untuk mem- uh, membangunkan uh, rules rules dan juga emissions trading punya platform. Jadi di bawah NDRC mereka telah menubuhkan satu Certified Carbon Emission Reductions which is a certificate yang mana dia mengkonfirmkan sesuatu trading itu. Jadi sebab benda ini tak boleh dibuat dua kali seperti apa yang pernah berlaku masa dahulu di mana satu pihak telah uh, membuat satu transaksi uh, bersama dengan uh, satu negara dan dia buat satu lagi transaksi dengan negara lain. Um, ini adalah satu kesalahan. Jadi, bila ditubuhkan uh, mekanisme-mekanisme ini, ia adalah untuk menyatukan uh, United Nations, negara-negara yang Um, signatory kepada United Nations untuk uh, di confirmkan di bawah uh, satu banner lah uh, in terms of carbon trading. So kita move to the next slide. Okay. Look, uh, yeah. So di When it comes to carbon trading, ada beberapa uh, mekanisam yang sebenarnya telah ditubuhkan, di, uh, diperkenalkan. Dia adalah tujuh sistem yang secara keseluruhannya. Uh, dua yang paling penting adalah cat and trade dan satu lagi adalah offsetting. Tetapi saya akan mention juga yang lagi lima, satu ialah baseline credit system, satu lagi dia panggil clean development mechanism, joint implementation, emission reductions agreement dan carbon fee and dividend. Jadi tujuh mekanisme ini mempunyai kelebihan masing-masing berdasarkan structure dan juga persetujuan pihak yang menjual dan membeli. Jadi di mana okey bila kita patah balik kepada dua yang penting itu satu cap and trade sistem ini establishes a cap on maximum emission yang boleh di reduce dikurangkan secara aggregate emission daripada group of emitters maksudnya Uh, pembeli uh, kredit itu tadi uh, salah satu mungkin pihak negara salah satu lagi mungkin pihak bisnes bisnes um, European Union Trading System uh, Trading Scheme yang saya uh, mention tadi is the world largest carbon market uh, the value as of January 2022 ialah 978 billion jadi Uh, awal Januari 2023 uh, saya informasi yang diterima oleh saya uh, dia cuma increase by 5% uh, kerana beberapa uh, apa ni uh, beberapa insiden lah yang yang sedang berlaku di dalam dunia sekarang ni tetapi masih lagi Uh, this market masih lagi uh, very robust dan juga uh, very important untuk uh, kelestarian uh, pihak-pihak uh, dunia ini. So, companies when it comes to cap and trade, uh, company-company are given a fixed amount of credits depending on their emission. So, the credit that they receive they can later purchase uh, or sell if they have extra for example contohnya 
uh, pihak universiti negeri Jakarta mempunyai uh, kawasan-kawasan uh, balak uh, tumbuhan ataupun kawasan-kawasan uh, mangrove untuk ditrekkan bersama satu syarikat dari China yang memerlukan sertifikat tersebut mereka bolehlah uh, sama ada go through the trading market ataupun mereka boleh uh, berbincang secara tidak langsung dengan pihak pihak uh, yang mempunyai uh, carbon sertifikat ini dan dari segi perbincangan itu sekiranya dia ada lebih boleh dijual dan sekiranya kekurangan mereka boleh membeli itu adalah konsep of carbon trading what sorry cap and trade pertama dari segi offsetting ini adalah sesuatu yang the second most use tetapi masih lagi kurang dari segi apa ni penggunaannya jika dikomparkan dengan cap and trade tapi offsetting dia contohnya sesuatu syarikat ataupun entiti ataupun pihak universiti boleh mendapatkan carbon offset bila dia invest in project yang mengurangkan penggunaan ataupun pengeluaran greenhouse gas yang seperti Datuk Lo mention tadi. Uh, this project boleh jadi insektor yang tidak di cover oleh cap and trade dan juga boleh uh, apa ni di dalam sektor yang ada cap and trade. So offset credits uh, basically untuk kalau sekiranya di, di sini kita panggil selco meaning self consumption bolehlah digunakan untuk your own uh, uh, offset uh, apa ni your oh, your own offset ni lah carbon needs um, dia basically uh, ada dua kategori yang uh, biasa digunakan satu ialah uh, natural satu lagi ialah mechanical uh, reforestation Uh, maksudnya di, di bahagian peladangan ataupun wetland seperti mangrove is considered natural. This is example of natural because it's basically di bahagian uh, uh, mangrove sendiri is a very uh, the reason why mangrove is important ialah dia seperti uh, uh, apa ni? badan yang mengurangkan karbon uh, dioksida dan mengeluarkan oksigen. Jadi seperti uh, forest juga adalah satu benda yang penting. Uh, mechanical solution ialah investment in technology uh, yang mengurangkan emission seperti renewable energy. Jadi kalau uh, sekarang ni terdapat banyak berita di mana uh, solar power uh, di, dibangunkan oleh negara-negara ASEAN seperti Malaysia, Indonesia dan Philippines dan juga uh, projek hydro. Hydro juga memainkan peranan yang penting dari segi uh, mechanical uh, carbon offsetting ini. Uh, jadi ini adalah dua part yang amat penting apabila kita bercerita pasal carbon trading. Uh, Benda-benda ini boleh dibangunkan, teknologi-teknologi ini boleh dibangunkan secara individual ataupun secara organisation. Ini juga adalah penting kerana uh, when it comes to investment sendiri, uh, kebanyakan projek-projek mega perlulah uh, memerlukan organisation-organisation yang penting seperti ini. Jadi uh, bila kita tengok dari segi pembangunan offsetting, dia masih lagi kekurangan dari segi value-nya. Ini kerana kebanyakan self-consumption selalunya tidak 
diperdagangkan seperti cat and trade tadi. Uh, jadi global carbon offset uh, ialah 331 billion compared to cat and trade which is 970 billion uh, seperti yang diterangkan tadi. So dia tak berapa offsetting ini tidak berapa praktikal sebab uh, isunya uh, uh, market yang di, yang keluar whereby you can buy carbon offsetting by others uh, tidak banyak yang yang diperkenalkan uh, so the largest scheme under offsetting is the clean development mechanism itu agak susah kerana uh, value-nya terpulang kepada pihak-pihak uh, yang mengeluarkan carbon certificate tadi. Contohnya sekiranya saya uh, mempunyai satu ladang yang besar dan saya mempunyai sertifikat dan sertifikat yang saya perlukan sebab setiap peladangan uh, contohnya kita memerlukan juga uh, carbon offset kerana ada kilang-kilang yang Uh, mengeluarkan karbon-karbon juga. Jadi kita perlu kita punya own offsetting dan kita ada extra. Jadi extra tu kita boleh jual. Tetapi sebab kita dah offset yang kita punya penggunaan, uh, we can then create our own value lah. Uh, so next, the project practice that is normal that is undertaken in CDM is seperti yang ditunjukkan adalah the energy industry, uh, waste handling, manufacturing, agriculture dan ada lagi lapan. Tetapi yang yang paling besar buat masa sekarang adalah energy industry. Kenapa energy industry? Sebab seluruh dunia sekarang ni sedang uh, tertumpu kepada renewable energy. Jadi One of the biggest uh, energy industry uh, contributor dari segi carbon certificate ialah solar power project. Uh, jadi kita dengar banyak uh, contohnya solar power, floating solar, solar di atas tanah, uh, floating di atas tasik, uh, solar yang diperkenalkan untuk diletakkan di atas bumbung rumah pun boleh diperkenalkan uh, dari segi carbon offset. Jadi Uh, market untuk in energy industry jauh melangkaui market-market lain sekiranya digabungkan dan sekarang ini itu adalah market yang sedang dibangunkan jadi uh, dari segi size memang uh, di, sekiranya dicampurkan dengan market-market lain uh, energy industry adalah uh, terbesar tetapi Uh, reason mengapa energy industry adalah terbesar seperti yang saya mention tadi kerana semua negara sedang tertumpu di situ walhal sebenarnya uh, agriculture industry dan forestry industry uh, mempunyai satu uh, kita punya potensi yang besar untuk dibangunkan uh, the reason kenapa sekarang ini agriculture dan forestry industry tidak di bangunkan secara menyeluruh adalah kerana kebanyakan negara tidak mempunyai agriculture industry dan forestry industry yang besar akan tetapi when it comes to energy semua negara memerlukan pembangunan clean energy seperti China seperti Amerika seperti juga negara-negara Eropah jadi mereka ini juga punya banyak Uh, apa ni enggak punya banyak kawasan-kawasan uh, agriculture dan kawasan-kawasan forest untuk dibangunkan. Jadi this this kind of action selalunya memang ialah negara-negara uh, besar dunia di hadapan dan kita ngikut. Jadi bila mereka bangunkan energy industry seluruh dunia tertumpu kepada energy industry. Sedangkan negara-negara uh, seperti Malaysia, Indonesia dan juga Brazil mempunyai 
uh, keunikan sendiri sekiranya mau membangunkan uh, forestry development dan juga um, apa ni forestry dan agriculture development. So itu adalah uh, persoalan yang perlu di, di ditanya sendiri oleh pihak-pihak uh, negara-negara membangun ini. Adakah untuk konsentrik juga di bahagian uh, energy development saja ataupun uh, untuk memperkembangkan bahagian-bahagian dari industri-industri yang lain. Uh, kita perlu men- me- melihat ke bahagian yang unik uh, so that we can uh, find a unique area that we can uh, what we call this excel on that's the idea so next go to look okay it as a gist of it when it comes to carbon offsets it is available to individuals dan small business dan large corporations untuk uh, support your projects that remove greenhouse gases So this one seperti yang saya mention tadi kenapa volume yang agak rendah sebab it is voluntarily traded Ber, bermakna sekiranya saya ada sertifikat dia akan terpulang kepada saya untuk menentukan harga dia. Jadi it's it's quite volatile dan uh, because it's voluntary I can sell at whatever price it doesn't matter in terms of market. Sebab itu uh, this Uh, market this carbon offsets kebanyakannya dia panggil uh, di, digunakan oleh uh, orang-orang yang mempunyai mengeluarkan sendiri sertifikat dan dia juga menggunakan sertifikat itu uh, kembali uh, itu kita panggil self consumption uh, on the other side cap and trade uh, it's only traded by companies and governments it's not available to be traded by individuals Usually there is a trade market uh, for cap and trade, uh, then it represents the right to emit. Contohnya, sekiranya saya ada sertifikat to emit uh, one metric ton of carbon, that is the only um, uh, that is the amount of carbon yang saya boleh emit and be exempted. Any any more than that carbon emission, I will have to pay a fee. Uh, it, you know itu adalah something yang memang naturally develop uh, cap and trade system is regulated by the government uh, seperti yang saya perkenalkan tadi dari segi uh, EU trading and uh, China CCER uh, markets uh, US uh, Amerika Syarikat juga mempunyai uh, trading system akan tetapi dia uh, mereka memperkenalkan trading system by region, by state. Maksudnya, you ada carbon credit, you boleh trade di California, uh, di New York, dan juga di Texas. Uh, ini adalah tiga negeri saja yang diintroduce uh, carbon trading uh, market. Uh, jadi, regulationnya adalah agak strict, agak ketat, akan tetapi it, it is uh, quite effective. So carbon credit dia agak cap and trade dia agak straightforward di mana uh, pihak-pihak yang mengintroducekan certificate of carbon seperti uh, mangrove uh, area deforestation area uh, mengeluarkan satu certificate yang uh, di apa ni Uh, di recognize by United Nations, uh, by the uh, trading trading bodies seperti uh, uh, NDRC dan sertifikat ini boleh dijual kepada company yang memerlukan syarikat-syarikat yang memerlukan uh, uh, sertifikat ini kebanyakannya adalah manufacturing industry yang banyak mengeluarkan uh, karbon-karbon yang berbahaya ataupun seperti oil and gas industri juga mengeluarkan banyak-banyak gas yang berbahaya. Jadi mereka memerlukan sertifikat ini. 
So apabila mereka beli sikit-sikit ni, uh, mereka akan uh, diberi pelepasan. Tetapi bila mereka beli sikit-sikit ini, is kind of like a trade uh, bersama uh, pihak yang mengeluarkan sikit-sikit. Sebab uh, pihak yang mengeluarkan sikit-sikit tidak boleh uh, memotong ataupun uh, mengurangkan dia punya forest tadi. Uh, offset carbon is seperti yang saya cakap tadi, uh, to cut it short, dia adalah self-consumption uh, punya mekanisme. Di situ, sila banyak uh, persoalan dari segi uh, market uh, regulation tadi. Jadi sekiranya saya mengeluarkan sertifikat dan saya sudah pakai, yang selebihnya saya boleh jual, tetapi it's up to your pricing. That's why the price is very volatile dan tidak banyak bahagian-bahagian perusahaan yang memilih untuk go to the carbon offset route. So bila kita bercakap berkenaan dengan carbon trading, dia adalah dari segi Uh, ekosistem ekosistem di mana seperti forest forest ecosystem contributes to carbon sequestration and afforestation ataupun reforestation penanaman semula reforestation dan avoidance of deforestation which is pemotongan uh, pokok-pokok tadi is included in the carbon trading program itu nombor satu, forest. Uh, nombor dua adalah mangroves dan wetland. Uh, mangrove dan wetland seperti yang saya mention tadi adalah vital. Uh, kerana projek ini adalah untuk mem- uh, merestore the mangrove or wetlands that will generate the positive uh, oxygen to the air dan track uh, carbon down in, in the, the uh, mangrove wetland tadi. Itu adalah penting. Seterusnya, kita memang ada dari segi grassland, agriculture lands, uh, urban green spaces. Ada 10 kategori yang kita uh, kenal pasti untuk uh, membangunkan carbon trading tadi. Um, tetapi, sekarang ini buat masa sekarang cuma ada empat yang uh, sedang dibangunkan secara agresif. Next, adakah this effort success, successful? Uh, next, secara Uh, kita panggil tersurat secara open. These efforts are showing positive signs setakat ini. Um, sekiranya the, the climate policies tidak dibangunkan, uh, kita menjangkakan the suhu akan uh, berkembang by 2100 sebanyak 4 degree celsius sekiranya 4 degree celsius saya rasa memang kebanyakan tempat di dalam dunia bukan saja di Indonesia tadi Malaysia tidak boleh diduduki walaupun sekarang ini sekarang ini suhu masih lagi naik tetapi dengan memperkenalkan carbon trading ini ia masih lagi uh, di tahap yang walaupun berbahaya tetapi masih lagi di tahap yang boleh dikawal uh, dan kita menerima uh, banyak pledges uh, um, pledges dan target target yang negara-negara uh, individu sendiri sedang membangunkan dan membuat pledging sendiri uh, supaya 
emisinya tidak melebihi apa yang sepatutnya. Jadi benda ini setelah dibangunkan semenjak dari 1967 sehingga sekarang uh, masih lagi uh, memang terdapat negara-negara yang agak uh, kurang aktif tapi kebanyakan negara sudah mula uh, menjadi lebih aktif di dalam Kementerian Negeri Dunia. Uh, pada pandangan saya secara personal, sekiranya tidak banyak konflik-konflik seperti uh, apa yang berlaku di antara Rusia dan Ukraine, um, mungkin uh, inisiatif-inisiatif ini akan lebih uh, agresif. Buat masa sekarang, sekiranya ada konflik, ialah um, this kind of initiative selalunya uh, is a bit slow ataupun take a back seat. Tapi negara-negara yang tidak uh, involved di dalam konflik ini masih lagi um, quite effective di dalam uh, carbon trading. So, buat Tahun ini adalah di projected an increase of uh, only 5% in terms of the market size um, but it's still significant sebab uh, seperti yang saya mention tadi in 2022 the, the market is 970 billion sekiranya 5% increase it's still going to be almost 990 billion uh, in market size. Jadi, it's still significant dan it's good for the environment. Uh, so, saya harap UN, SCCC, uh, seperti yang dibincangkan di COP26 di Scotland, akan lebih uh, agresif and, and uh, memperkenalkan sistem-sistem baru yang mereka memang sekarang ini masih lagi dalam perbincangan untuk uh, memberi insentif yang lebih kepada uh, producer-producer uh, sertifikat ini. So, buat masa ini, itu adalah uh, the availability of process dan uh, hopefully uh, di masa-masa hadapan, uh, harga-harga sertifikat ini memang akan uh, uh, lebih stable dan lebih Uh, memberi keuntungan kepada pihak-pihak yang uh, dipertanggungjawabkan untuk menjaga uh, forestry dan juga untuk menjaga uh, mangrove-mangrove ini. Uh, buat masa sekarang, it's valuable tetapi kami rasa di masa hadapan, it will be more valuable kerana macam walau bagaimanapun industri-industri memerlukan Uh, certification, certification yang seperti ini. So, with that, I think uh, I hand over, uh, thank you very much to uh, everybody dan I hand over my uh, explanation back to Dr. Lowe. Thank you. Thank you, Okay, thank you, Dr. Nizam, for your presentation, and also Dr. Lo for uh, insightful talk. Yeah. So now we will be entering the Q&A session. Okay. So is there any question from the students? You can raise your hand and give the question to our our speakers. Pertimbangannya kemarin, Mbak Tina, kenapa? Okay, Rain, please. Terima kasih, Miss Mina. Uh, sebelumnya, uh, sorry, uh, I have a trouble with my camera, so uh, I cannot uh, open my camera. Okay. Uh, uh, before that, uh, may I introduce myself? My name is Rena Alfredian, for uh, from Biology Department uh, of Jakarta State University. Uh, I have uh, some questions uh, for Dr. Nizam. Yes. Um, in carbon trading, uh, each company or institutions has its own limit on the productions of harmful gases released into the air. 
uh, my question is uh, to determine the limit, what determines a company or institutions can get a higher limit? Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reno. Eh? Reno? Um, yes, Dr. Okay. The, actually, when it comes to the limit of uh, uh, carbon emissions, uh, sebenarnya it's not a limit that is set by the government per se. Akan tetapi seperti negara-negara uh, macam saya bilang tadi, seperti negara uh, China, seperti negara US, uh, when a manufacturing company emits uh, the, the carbon to the air, there are certain uh, penalties that they have to pay. Uh, in China, if I'm not mistaken, for every metric ton, they have to pay about 500 uh, renminbi for every extra uh, for every metric ton that they emit to the air. Uh, with the certificate, the 500 uh, renminbi per ton is excused kerana dia sudah ada sertifikat tersebut. Jadi contohnya sekiranya perusahaan itu um, emitted 5,000 metric tons of carbon, dia tidak uh, perlu uh, untuk membayar that penalty as long as they have the certificate. Kerana sertifikat itu dibeli daripada mereka-mereka yang um, menjaga mangrove, menjaga forestry supaya orang yang menjaga mangrove dan forestry itu tidak uh, memotong uh, pokok-pokoknya uh, dan dan this one is offset uh, you know against each other that means you come out uh, you produce uh, carbon dioxide but the person who produce the oxygen is also uh, compensated by your company so that is the basic idea Okay, uh, okay, that sir is understandable. Um, thank you very much. Ini bukan apa ya, bukan rasis ya, tapi sorry, hampir sorry. semua kotanya di kelasnya kita. Roro, okay, please. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, please, for being allowed to ask, I want to ask for Dr. No. And before I want introduction myself, I'm Dora. I would like to ask a question. How is carbon dioxide production of each country is calculated so that countries can be ranked? Oh, okay. The, what did they do is that uh, when you talk about the ranking there, the calculation of carbon dioxide that is produced, uh, they have a certain metrics by looking into the, uh, what do you say? the uh, industry activities, the transportation activities, and um, you know, uh, there is a, a certain group of this thing. They, they call it the uh, metric, uh, the carbon metric indexes. So what did they do is that they have this, and then of course it's not complete, and it's not, uh, I would say it is not, how would I say, it is not, uh, um, I wouldn't say uh, I, it is not really uh, uh, a complete and comprehensive kind of calculation. This is based on more or less like an estimation. For example, I have so many of this industry in, in my country. Each of these producers, each of these have this, uh, you know, uh, each industry uh, is calculated based on estimation. Okay, this industry with this technology estimated producers of carbon dioxide is how many ton per year. So how many of these? And then we, we calculated based on that. At the same time, you also have forests. Your forest, how many, uh, uh, how big is your forest? And this number of, this, this size of forest is estimated to be able to absorb so much of this uh, carbon dioxide. So so what did they do is they, uh, they, they, they collate all this, they kumpul kan ini semua ni, kemudian ditetapkan bahawa negara ini mengeluarkan begitu banyak carbon dioxide. Ini seakan-akan pengiraan kalau uh, kalau student uh, biasa 
pengiraan kita panggil sebagai GDP, gross domestic produce, country kan, ini contoh dia lah di ekonomi. So kalau GDP kita ambil kira consumption, we talk about investments, we talk about these few metrics, and then we sort of like calculated that it is not ia tidak sempurna, tetapi ia memberikan satu gambaran. So ini yang dikirakan dalam bentuk yang jadi detail ini nanti saya boleh sharekan di punya link kalau uh, uh, mahasiswa mahasiswi berminat uh, anda boleh melihat kepada apa ni link ini uh, detail pengiraan dia uh, apa ni ia agak kom, agak complicated kerana setiap uh, apa ni uh, industri itu dianggarkan begini banyak dia punya pengeluaran karbon dioksida tetapi kita tak tahu secara tepatnya uh, apa yang dikeluarkan misalnya kapal terbang kalau kapal terbang terbang daripada kawasan A ke kawasan B jadi pengguna minyak itu akan mengeluarkan sekian banyak karbon dioksida ini secara anggaran sahaja jadi pengeluaran itu di, di dikira sebagai jumlah penumpang. Satu kapal terbang ada berapa banyak penumpang dan penumpang ini dianggarkan mengeluarkan sebegini banyak karbon dioksida. So this is a general idea of this calculation. Ya. Yeah. Uh, Oke, okay. thank you Dr. Oke, ini ada question maybe from the students. Oke, okay, Una, please. Uh, all right, thank you, Miss Fina, for the opportunity. Uh, sebelumnya, suara saya masuk tidak? Yes, it's very clear. Well, okay. Uh, uh, so here, I, I would like I would like to ask some question to Mr. Low Hock Hang, Mr. Uh, I want to ask about uh, about the uh, population mutation. Is that if the population mutation is the right solution for um, solve the problem of high urbanization uh, in some region or an area? Maybe that's all for my uh, question. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Arna. Is it Arna? Yeah. If I got your name correctly, hopefully I got it right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your your question is what I I can't I don't really catch your questions. You're talking about what population? Uh, you're talking about penduduk. Is it jumlah penduduk? Uh, is it possible to? To yeah, can you please repeat the question? Yeah, to repeat the question. Ulang. Yeah. Uh, uh, baik Pak, uh, jadi saya ingin bertanya terkait uh, untuk menyikapi atau menyelesaikan permasalahan dari tingginya urbanisasi pada suatu daerah, apakah uh, mutasi penduduk itu merupakan solusi yang tepat dalam penyelesaian permasalahan tersebut, Pak. Oke. Okay. Apa right. sudah Thank jelas, Pak? Ya, yeah. oke. Okay. Terima kasih. Saya harap saya Thank boleh menjawab much. soalan ini. Sebab soalan ini melibatkan isu polisi negara. Jadi kalau kita lihat urbanisasi, urbanisasi asalnya disebabkan oleh penghijrahan uh, penduduk daripada luar bandar ke bandar. Uh, ataupun daripada satu kawasan ke kawasan lain. Apakah sebenarnya yang menyebabkan penghijrahan ini? Biasanya ia ada kaitannya dengan ekonomi. Mereka berhijrah dari satu tempat ke tempat lain. Ini dari segi sejarah. Manusia memang begitu. Kita berhijrah daripada tempat yang ekonomi, ke, apa ni, peluang ekonomi lebih rendah kepada kawasan di mana peluang ekonomi itu lebih tinggi. Ini untuk tujuan untuk memperbaiki kehidupan. Jadi itu sebenarnya mengakibat penghijrahan dan mengakibatkan populasi sesuatu kawasan itu 
menjadi tinggi. Jadi bila populasi menjadi semakin tinggi, semestinya lah penggunaan sumber itu akan meningkat. Jadi persoalan yang ditanyakan tu memang bagus. Cuma kita tak ada solusi yang khusus di sini. Jadi saya ingin menarik perhatian apa yang dibuat oleh negara China sebenarnya dan saya rasakan itu adalah satu usaha yang baik dan juga saya rasa itu sebenarnya sedang dilakukan oleh kerajaan Indonesia. Cabas diucapkan kepada kerajaan Indonesia. Apa yang kita boleh lakukan ialah untuk mengurangkan penghijrahan ini. Dan cara mengurangkan penghijrahan ini yang dibuat oleh negara-negara begini adalah untuk menyediakan peluang ekonomi di kawasan setempat. So kita ambil contoh, katakan sekarang uh, saya tinggal di kawasan apa ni hutan bakau, uh, mangrove forest. Tempat tu tidak ada peluang, tak ada industri di sana. Jadi untuk melangsungkan kehidupan saya terpaksa mungkin berhijrah ke Jakarta untuk mendapatkan pekerjaan di sana. Ada kilang dan industri di sana. Jadi sekiranya kita boleh mengujukan satu satu bentuk industri misalnya dari segi pelancongan ataupun industri menjaga uh, kelestarian uh, hutan bakau itu sendiri. Dengan lain perkataan, bila saya menjaga ni, saya juga mempunyai uh, apa ni peluang untuk meningkatkan taraf ekonomi saya. Jadi bila ini berlaku, saya tidak akan berhijrah. So sebenarnya itu yang kalau kita lihat itu yang di, dibina itu yang dibuat kalau model ini kita lihat berlaku di negara China luar bandar apa yang mereka buat ialah mereka membina infrastruktur menghubungkan orang daripada bandar ke luar bandar memudahkan uh, hasil uh, daripada luar bandar dibawa ke bandar jadi orang luar bandar tidak perlu ke bandar tidak perlu berhijrah untuk melangsungkan kehidupan meningkatkan gaya hidup mereka. So basically, I think this is a macro, macro lah. Ini sebenarnya usaha makro secara keseluruhan daripada kerajaan. Ya, saya harap saya boleh jawab soalan sebenarnya. Baik, terima kasih Pak. Sama-sama. Thank you. Uh, Una for your question and uh, Dr. Long for your answer. Okay, so maybe I would also to ask about our talk today. And my question is about uh, carbon itself. I mean, carbon itself is something that is invisible by our eyes. And uh, how is it monitored by the client? I mean, the client who by carbon credit is uh, is there any 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 way for them to know the transparency of uh, of their payment by by having uh, to buy the uh, carbon credit now, mr nizam perhaps you want to answer this yes thank you very much uh, basically there are mechanism calculation mechanism when it comes to uh, carbon credit calculation. For example, uh, scientifically, there is a number, a certain uh, amount of uh, emission, um, oxygen production that a tree emits to the air um, in terms of mangrove forest and also, uh, yeah, seperti pokok uh, bala, di mana pokok cengal dan pokok jati, mengeluarkan different amount of oxygen. Uh, so, jadi, when we talk about uh, carbon uh, credit ataupun carbon calculation, there will be uh, a body that will come and do a calculation in terms of uh, beberapa jenis pokok yang ada, keluasannya, dan from there, how much is the uh, positive emission in terms of oxygen that is uh, sent out to the air. And from that, then they will turn it into a certificate. Uh, this kind of uh, calculation is done uh, extensively every five years and is monitored every year. Uh, jadi, sekiranya contoh uh, 
masa mula-mula ada 50,000 ekar contohnya that is part of the certificate dan the calculation has been done based on the 50,000 dan payment is made based on 50,000 that means the forest have to remain uh, untouched the 50,000 uh, acres uh, or hectares tadi so the calculation is uh, scientifically based and both parties uh, are very well aware because this calculation and the certificate has to be submitted to the United Nations every year. I see. Yes. So there is. Uh, yes. uh, okay, Dr. Long, do you want to add? Yeah. Some? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just want to add. Uh, this calculation is actually very technical and it's been done by experts. Biasanya begitu. So, apa yang mereka buat, kadang-kadang kita kena uh, menghormati para saintis seperti saintis di United, UNJ kan. Apa yang mereka buat ialah mereka kaji setiap pokok itu dan pokok ini boleh mengeluarkan berapa banyak oksigen. Ini dikaji secara mendalam. Kemudian, berapakah umur pokok itu, berapakah ketinggian, berapakah uh, uh, berapa banyak Uh, daun dahan yang ada mereka kaji secara mendalam. Jadi, uh, jadi uh, mengapa Mr Nizam kata after every five years? Because every five years the tree pokok tu mungkin sama, tetapi mungkin size pokok tu telah menjadi lebih besar sebab pokok menjadi lebih matang. Jadi mungkin dari segi itu uh, apa ni jumlah oksigen yang keluarkan mungkin menjadi lebih banyak. Right? Uh, so this is this is uh, so this one I really have to respect those scientists. And then uh, kadang-kadang mereka lihat juga dari segi uh, apa ni hidupan dia di sana. You know how how they actually talks about improving of all this. I see. So the calculation is a very very detailed and I uh, and it it is monitored by uh, expert. Yeah, in term of scientific data. Yeah. And my another question, maybe uh, one short question from me. So from uh, Satera Biotech, and this is uh, something that is very very hot issue, yeah, about carbon trading and offsetting. And from Satera itself, what kind of effort did uh, Satera Biotech do to support sustainability development uh, for the next maybe five or ten years? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what we are actually doing is that we are there are two things that Satira is doing for a time being. All right, the first one is to work with this uh, uh, forestry department of Malaysia because our products are mainly from mangrove forests. So we work closely with forest uh, uh, forestry department of Malaysia to manage kita kita cuba membantu mereka dari segi pengurusan hutan bakau itu sendiri. So, jadi apa yang kita buat ialah kita memberikan sedikit uh, apa ni sumbangan kepada uh, jabatan itu uh, untuk membantu mereka uh, kita kata mengurus dan juga memantau uh, pokok bakau di sana. Ini yang pertama. Okay. Yang kedua, apa yang kita lakukan ialah juga kita membantu dari segi penanaman semula uh, pokok bakau. Sebab pokok bakau, apa yang di, di bina, apa yang dibuat oleh apa ni jabatan perhutanan di, di di Malaysia ialah mereka mengeluarkan lesen kepada syarikat tertentu untuk memotong pokok bakau. Tapi uh, perlu memenuhi syarat-syaratnya. Misalnya pokok itu perlu 30 tahun dan ke atas. Jumlah pokok yang boleh ditebang sekian banyak sahaja. Jadi bila ditebang kemudian maka penanaman semula perlu dibuat. Jadi uh, dari segi penanaman semula ia memerlukan uh, apa ni uh, di uh, pokok-pokok uh, yang yang baru yang 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 perlu ditanam di sana dan juga memerlukan tenaga. So Satira, we are not able to provide that, but what we do is we provide some funding for these people to do that. Hopefully, we can we can actually improve that. And at the same time, 
uh, what Satira did is we do not we do not burn the tree actually. The burning and the cutting of the tree is for the charcoal industry. Itu adalah untuk industri ar ar arang. Dan mereka telah membuat ini sekian lama dihantar ke Jepun, dijual ke Jepun, arang-arang itu. Apa yang Satira buat adalah kita sebenarnya mengambil hasil uh, bila mereka bakar, maka keluarnya wap. Kita ambil wap itu sebenarnya. Right, we actually take that, that that thing. We don't we don't actually encourage the the burning of that. And and the other thing is that we are also looking into how can we extract the uh what do you say the uh, active ingredient from the uh what do you say poko bakau uh, from the mangrove tree. How can we extract them without harming the tree? This is what we are actually working with UTI. For this purpose, yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Long. So, main effort maybe. Uh, I would like to. I would like to conclude that Satera, uh, also supporting in conservation, yeah, conservation, uh, and because Satera uh, do a lot of research, then uh, Satera also work with. Forest department, yeah. and also uh, second one is reforestation, uh, reforestation calculation as uh, to uh, which part of the, the forest that may they might need to be reforested. Okay, thank you for your answer, Dr. Mo. And we have another question here so from Nicholas. Please. Hey, thank you, ma'am. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, we can hear your voice. Hey, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so I want to ask for the chief professor that attend is giving our material today. So we know that uh, the livestock agriculture and food industry is are the largest contributor to the greenhouse gases. But this industry, we cannot cut it just like party like, like that we know that this uh this industry will grow grow in the line with the demand of the increasing of what population growth and i don't think carbon trading is enough for this apart from carbon trading are there any other solution to reduce greenhouse gases from this tree industry okay nizam you want to you want me to answer or Okay, I'll just answer then maybe Mr. Nizam, you can you can you can supplement. Okay. Yeah, please. For for everything that happens uh, around here, um there is no hundred percent uh what do you say solution for this. What we are what the world is trying to do is to try to minimize and hopefully to improve the current scenario. Yes, carbon trading is not I mean carbon trading is one of the way to go about it. We are trying to use this, and like the uh, slide that Mr. Nizam has shown, there is actually some positive effect from this. It is not it is not perfect, but at least we are moving into the right direction. The other things that actually we are looking at is in terms of improving the technology. So technologies uh, we try to improve by if you look at it, there are a lot of ways that world the world is doing now. For example, you talks about uh, what do you say uh, devices that use less energy. If you talk about mobile handphone, for example, the mobile handphones, the newer version of mobile handphone, compared to the older version, the older versions uses more electricity than a newer version. So I think this is what it, the world. This is what we are doing, and. Uh, Uh, satu lagi kalau kita nampak sekarang banyak membincangkan tentang penggunaan uh, ken, uh, kenderaan elektrik. Ini juga salah satu cara untuk kita mengurangkan uh, apa yang kita kata penggunaan ataupun pembakaran bahan api. Bila peng, kita kurangkan pembakaran bahan api, kita boleh mengurangkan uh, pelepasan karbon dioksida ke udara. So dan juga usaha menanam dan menanam pokok bagi mengatasi. Saya rasa ini adalah usaha yang kita lakukan 
uh, yang dibuat oleh warga dunia bagi uh, uh, bagi uh, kita uh, mengurangkan mengurangkan impak kalau tidak dapat kita menghapuskan impak itu sama sekali tapi sekurang-kurangnya kita dapat mengurangkan impak itu. So ini usaha yang sedang dilakukan dan uh, kita perlu terus uh, apa ni uh, menyokong usaha begini. So ini yang 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 uh, yang saya lihat dan ini yang sedang dibina sebenarnya. So juga kita sebenarnya apa yang perlu kita buat ialah untuk memberikan kesedaran umum kepada lebih ramai orang tentang uh, usaha yang dilakukan. Kadang-kala carbon trading ni suatu usaha yang baik tetapi mungkin dari segi kesedaran itu tidak tidak sampai. Jadi ada yang mereka tidak tahu macam uh, usaha ni sebenarnya pen, pemeliharaan uh, hutan, pemeliharaan apa ni kita panggil sebagai hutan bakau ni sebenarnya dapat mendatangkan hasil. Jadi kadang-kadang kerana mereka tidak sedar, mereka just mereka merosakkan sahaja tanpa menyedari bahawa ini sebenarnya usaha memelihara itu boleh memberikan pulangan yang lumayan juga. Ya. Ya. If I if I might add a little bit uh, to Dr. Lo punya uh, statement. Uh, yes, the reason why this uh, carbon credit Uh, uh, trading is created is also to compensate the uh, industry developers uh, sepertinya contoh uh, forestation uh, when you look at the forestation uh, when you cut the trees uh, and and you start to cultivate other form of agriculture products um, there is a higher demand and higher value to it dan because of that juga terdapat beberapa insiden di mana uh, hutan-hutan yang telah digazetkan sebagai hutan simpan di, dipotong begitu sahaja kerana yang membangunkan uh, satu-satu industri seperti kelapa sawit contohnya jadi uh, berpatah balik kepada uh, statement Dr. Lo di di mana kita perlu mencari sesuatu sumber ekonomi uh, ini mungkin akan memberi satu insentif ekonomi kepada mereka-mereka untuk menjaga uh, forest forest tadi ataupun bahagian mangrove kerana ada beberapa kawasan juga yang uh, when it comes to mangrove uh, forestation yang telah dipotong dan di di uh, dirosakkan kerana untuk mereka membangunkan sesuatu uh, kawasan uh, tourism seperti hotel dan sebagainya. Jadi benda-benda ini uh, aktiviti-aktiviti seperti ini sekiranya di uh, berikan insentif mungkin uh, pihak-pihak yang bertanggungjawab, pihak-pihak kerajaan juga akan memberi Uh, uh, fokus yang lebih dari segi menjaga kawasan-kawasan yang penting ini. Itu saja. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nizam. Uh, Nicholas, please address your question. Uh, yeah, it's answer my question, but there's uh, from the the professor said that if we we can cultivate that our product Right, but the thing let's be real that the thing is that most of the green gas houses from food production is mostly like from the farm, like especially uh especially from the sapi, sapi from the so but I know that the soy crops that 70 and seven percent used for uh pakan sapi. That's so I think there's nothing that we can do if we cannot also Uh, learn how to reduce the reduce the farming effect from the cut. I mean, like, jadi kita tak 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 dapat uh, mengkultivasi sendiri walaupun kita karena walaupun kita mengkultivasi sendiri 
bahwasanya uh, sebagian besar greenhouse gases itu berasal dari uh, peternakan bukan dari pertanian. Cuman well, itu. Okay. Jadi, you make the uh, livestock industry or the agricultural industry and the industry. I mean, uh, the, the industry that you see uh, affecting our our greenhouse gases so much is the agricultural and and livestock is it peternakan industri peternakan yes but but uh, most of our food production is food production gas greenhouses is mostly from the uh, peternakan livestock so if even we can culture our plant by ourselves at our home that if if the pertanakan doesn't reduce the demand and supply then it's i think it's still uh increasing the co2 in atmosphere and so it seems like there's an other solution for the especially in the uh pertanakan the livestock industry Uh, when it comes to, to the livestock industry that you mentioned, uh, it is, um, yes, it is one of the biggest uh, emitters of carbon uh, into the air. Uh, we are not denying that fact. Uh, but to tell you the truth, in terms of uh, manufacturing, it also uh, emit quite a lot of carbons into the air. So it goes hand in hand. Uh, but the one thing that this uh, uh, carbon trading is trying to uh, control or introduce is, number one, is the awareness that, uh, first of all, uh, there, is, there is no avoiding uh, in terms of carbon production. Uh, because we are um, humans and we tend to want to improve our, ourselves in terms of technology, in terms of livelihood, and uh, a lot of other sectors. However, the idea is, like I said, to introduce the um, information that while we uh, emit all these carbons, it is also important to control it a little bit. Uh, as much as we can. So the idea of this carbon trading is number one, to also say to people that, um, you know, instead of going into the industry that emits a lot of carbons, the industry that helps to reduce it can also uh, be, uh, what do you call this, uh, can also be uh, use to you know give you a good livelihood that's number one number two the idea is like i said uh, for every now countries are introducing uh, a what we call uh, not a not a tax per se but in some countries they call it tax they call it carbon tax that means for every carbon that you produce to the air there are certain amount that you have to pay and this is actually the amount of funds that uh, governments and countries use to pay for this carbon trading. So on hindsight, it's to uh, encourage the uh, increase of afforestation, meaning replanting. And it also can develop into certain uh, technological advancements to, re to help reduce carbon. For example, in China and in Europe, if I'm not mistaken, they are developing uh, a device where it can uh, suck in the carbon from the air and then store it underground. So that is under development right now. There are a few companies that is doing the testing and these companies are uh, basically getting the grants from the government that uh, introduce this carbon tax. So hopefully 
you know it can it can help to to reduce the carbons yeah uh, just to add on to Mr. Nizam's side uh, for Nicholas, yeah. Uh, when you talk about livestock, um, I think this this thing is a bit uh, what do you say is a uh, is a supply and demand thing. If you look at in terms of world population, we are increasing world population. No, the world population has been increasing over the years. So um, definitely more food is required. When you say more food means definitely you have more livestock uh, activities and also, of course, uh, more uh, others, uh, what do you say, food producing um, plants that you're going to plant. So we can't actually run away from this. What we need to do is actually perhaps using a better technology to control and, you know, um, using a better management systems in terms of, uh, you know, uh, and manage the livestock that we have. So modern farming will comes into play. And um, in fact, uh, I think uh, Uni University in the Great Jakarta has also been doing that. They are looking into how we can actually use microbes to, you know, to enhance the soil, uh, the, the ways of this uh, uh, livestock, how we can actually re reuse it in such a way that you know we can actually uh, capture some of this carbon that is being produced, some of the uh, what do you say, uh, unwanted uh, things that is being produced, how we can reuse it again for the benefit of human beings. So it is actually a balanced kind of thing. Uh, so carbon trading is one of the way for us to uh, ensure that you know. Uh, production side will be balanced. The production of carbon will be balanced by the absorption of the carbon. So the whole idea is to create this kind of, to put back this balance that uh, that we have in a way disrupted it to a certain extent. So now how we can put back this balance so that uh, the world can keep, you know, be able to sustain itself for the future generation. Thank you very much, Dr. Law and Dr. Nizam, for your answer. So, uh, we have very good discussion in here, but unfortunately, we are in, uh, we are near to the end of uh, the event. So, to conclude this talk, maybe I would like to, uh, to, to summarize for today, today's talk that. Uh, in here, uh, collective moves are the most important things. So, collective moves are the most important things in reducing carbon in atmosphere and also reducing sustainability. And collective is not from uh, just individual action. If it has to be from uh, governments, uh, academic staff, like lecturers, researchers, yeah, and also the students of university. And also uh, organization like ATERA also uh, give a really good uh, balance to 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 take action in supporting sustainability and uh, for three elements that we need to have balance like uh, Dr. Law already presented it's about uh, people who is the society prosperity to support the economic economic growth and also the people uh, the the environment yeah because we need environment to to always grow and uh, we cannot we cannot uh, exclude environment uh, in our life so building responsibility and awareness is very very uh, very effort that we need to we need to take uh, by all of us and yeah, not not only the government but also the academic staff organization and the company itself and uh, hopefully uh, when the student can also be the one who take action in supporting sustainability effort along with satera biotechnology and 
that's all for today. And before we end this talk, maybe uh, I would like to guide you for the documentation. So for all students, uh, you can turn on your camera so because we need to take the documentation for the website uh, the department. Okay, all students, Aliza, Nazgato, Fiona, please turn on your camera. Okay. Um, while waiting for all the students to turn on the camera, I would like to say thank you. Thank you very much for our speakers, Dr. Lo and Dr. Niza. I would also like to uh, say thank you for all the lecturers of biology department of ONJ uh, who have attended this talk and all the students yeah, from biology 2022 yeah 22nd for joining this talk and also some students from uh, our uh, elective course from amdal yeah memia okay Okay, so I think many of you already turned on the camera, so I would like to take the documentation of the first slide. And the second slide. And lastly, the third slide. Okay, thank you very much for today, and I'm sorry for any inconvenience during the talk. Uh, good afternoon, and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Nizam and Dr. Lu, and Dr. Dahlia is also here with us. <laughs> Dr. Okay. Lu. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank, yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you very much, uh, first of all. Uh, let me just say a few words. Uh, thank you very much uh, to University of Negeri Jakarta for inviting us to give a talk, um, yeah. for giving us this opportunity. Uh, also, thank you very much to Madam Ayu for making this happen. There are a lot of coordination work. I'm sure it is not easy. Uh, same thing also to the uh, coordinator. She's, she has done a superb job, fantastic job, uh, thanks to her. And of course, also to my dear friend in University of Negeri Jakarta, uh, Madam Ayu, uh, Prof. Dahlia, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. It has been a pleasure uh, keeping uh, touch with you all again. Of course, um, not forgetting to the Dean of uh, Biological Biology Department. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I cannot, I don't know his, his full name, but I would like to say thank you very much for uh, arranging this. And also to all the lecturers and dosen-dosen yang dihormati. Terima kasih kerana uh, turut bersama kita petang ini. Um, and of course, uh, lastly, also to all the students uh, for uh, for attending our talk. I hope you have gained a lot from this. And, uh, you know, uh, I think this, hopefully this is a start. Uh, we hope that in future, we can, we can move one more step further, which is to create you know, if possible, uh, some uh, carbon trading activities. Uh, but Unity in the Green Jakarta can champion this. We can come in and support as in terms of making this carbon trading uh, uh, something that can happen, uh, taking care of the mangrove forest and also to help the community there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of you. Dr. Nizam and Dr. Lu, I hope this is not just for the end. This is the our first to make the joint collaboration between Satera and both of you to our uh, department. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Dr. Dalia. Professor Dalia. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Lu and Mr. Nizam. Looking forward to meet you offline. <laughs> yeah, okay. Same here, same here. <laughs> okay, yeah, terima thank kasih, you very much. Kita. Saya kembalikan. Terima kasih. Yeah, terima kasih, Mr. Nizam, for your time, Dr. Lu. Okay. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.